They're giving the African migrants summonses for hopping the train. Uh, why give them a hard time? And you know they're out looking for work. If that was the Venezuelan migrants, they would have never gave them summons. They treat the African migrants like horse manure. While they treat the Venezuelan migrants like royalty. The Americans didn't attend for us to be here this long. In their terms, we warm out we worn out our welcome. So to help get us out the way, they're gonna bring in the Venezuelan migrants so they can exhaust all the uh, resources to get us out the way. They have the African migrants sleeping in tents while they have the Venezuelan migrants in motels, hotels actually. Every hotel I come across in Manhattan, just about 50% of them, none but Venezuelan migrants. And in Queens, in fact, also. The Americans say that the African migrants are like roaches. You can't get rid of them. The Africans are from Senegal, West Africa. They come out here to sell pocketbooks, but there's too many of them selling pocketbooks in Times Square. So the cops is arresting them and taking away their pocketbooks. What little do they have, they, do, they go to Canal Street and they uh, buy pocketbooks in bulk. <laughs> It will appear to you that the Venezuelan migrants is better hustlers than the African migrants, but that's not true. What happens is when the Africans try to set up their stuff and sell their stuff, they their stuff gets confiscated by the police or possibly they might go to jail. While on the other hand, the Venezuelan migrants, they don't do nothing to them. They let them set up shop everywhere, all over the city of New York City. Sees these newcomers, many of whom have faced arduous journeys in criminal gangs to arrive at this juncture. I came from Senegal, went to Morocco, to Spain, to El Salvador, to Nicaragua, and from Nicaragua to Mexico. But there was a lot of trafficking. Before entering the bus, they stop you. They had guns. They put a gun on your head demanding money. If you don't have money, they will take everything from you. It's very difficult. Upon arrival in the United States, many encounter harsh living conditions and, quite often, unfulfilled expectations. Everybody probably think when you, before you come to America, you think this is a, this is a place to be. Uh, the expectation for these migrants is we're going to America to better our lives. And um, the sad truth is when they come, it's, it's a whole different story. These migrants are required to undergo a waiting period of 180 days before they can be authorized to pursue employment, causing significant uncertainty for many. As you see on the floor, they got used clothes, used sneakers. They got their own little thrift shop. Thrift shop. Um, one thing I can say about them is they're not like the Venezuelan migrants. They don't be selling drugs. They don't be robbing people for their phones and stuff like that. This recent arrival from Senegal chose not to disclose his name as he seeks a work permit. We are here to tell you about our problem. We just want to work. We want working permits so we can work and we will all disperse. In their pursuit of the American dream, these migrants also find themselves caught up in the political landscape, especially with former President Donald Trump's aggressive stance against migrants who have come to the U.S. illegally. But most of them have 
concerned about what Trump is saying, especially talking about mass deportation. They're pretty concerned about that. So they are, they are definitely aware of um, the political situation in the U.S. right now. State Senator Cordell Clear is a Democrat representing West Harlem in New York City. She holds the view that the migrant issue transcends party lines and more help is needed from federal authorities. We need to band together and do is make sure states like New York State will absorb so much of this, get some funding from the federal government. As the election season kicks off and the hurdles confronting these newly arrived migrants capture the media spotlight, what remains steadfast is their aspiration for improved livelihoods, particularly with the backing of the little Senegal community. When Trump get back in office, he going to get rid of a lot of the Senegalians. He going to get rid of them, send them back to their country. But the Venezuelan migrants, he going to keep most of them here. You thinking about letting the Africans sell nut crackers to you? Yeah, why not? I got them niggas just standing there. They're not doing nothing. But yo, go run up in the store, nigga. <laughs> get whatever you can get, nigga. Break the shit back, nigga. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, nigga, you migrant, nigga. Nigga, just tell them niggas you don't know what you're doing anyway. You saw it on TV, a nigga go in the store, took whatever he wanted, went out. <laughs> you do the same shit. You don't know what's breaking the law, nigga. Yeah, niggas didn't give them niggas no rule book. You know what I mean? They didn't give the niggas, they didn't give them no rule book. They don't know if they're breaking the law or not. They didn't give them no what? No law rule book. They didn't give them a book like, yo, this oh, is, oh, you oh, can't. Yeah, 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 you're in a new country. You don't know, you don't speak the language. You don't know what's going on. Right, right. Fuck it, just go in there and start taking shit. I'm going to give you some cash, nigga. The, scammers, the yeah, the Africans, they big scammers. Them niggas to be defrauded niggas, all type of shit. Take niggas social, ID card, switch the face on it, put their face on it. Them niggas be doing all type of scamming, cannabis, stealing, thieving shit. But the problem is now, the banks are getting tight now, so now they can't do all that um, wire fraud, check fraud, big fraud. They can't do that shit no more, so they run out of options now. So now you got these niggas sitting on the block, sitting on the street, just looking around, lost. They don't know what to do. Shit. I spoke to a nigga the other day. This nigga told me, he said he gonna give himself a month and a half. If he don't make it in New York, he said he taking his ass back to Zimbabwe. That's where the nigga from. <laughs> Yo, so who, who, who's, who, who, who's the better hustlers? The Americans, the black Americans or the uh, Africans? The better scammers. Nah, Africans. Africans better scammers. Uh, hustlers, yeah. Uh, Americans, you always get that. But the scammers, yeah, them Africans, nigga. Them niggas will find out everybody in your family, social, address, everything. <laughs> All type of shit. These niggas is good, son. Them niggas, they, they be behind that computer, whatever the fuck they do. Them niggas will scam the shit out of you. You wake up looking crazy, like, yo, what the fuck? I was just with this nigga last night. I thought he was cool. I gave him my card to buy a drink. I woke up the next morning. I don't got no money on my debit card or nothing. What the fuck is going on? I just got paid today. I'm telling you, 